Greetings, y'all. My name is Reese Koppel. I'm the founder of acebridge.org and the coach of the Yale Bridge team. And today we've got a really exciting video in store. Today's video is called Play More Hands, Have More Fun, an aggressive approach with acebridge.org. Now, they've said that bridge is a bidder's game and that it benefits the bidder. The best scores are available to the side that wins the auction. Today, we're going to look at a few hands where we can clearly see the benefits of bidding, even if we go down. Now, these situations are often the case when our side is non-vulnerable. Notice here how we are non-vulnerable as our side is marked in white and our opponents are vulnerable as their side is marked in red. This situation here, where we are non-vol and our opponents are vol, that is called favorable vulnerability because it encourages us to take a bit more risk as we're non-vol while the opponents have to be very risk averse. Now this is due to the scoring. When we are non-vol, it costs us 50 for every under trick, every trick we are shy of our contract. So if we're in six diamonds and instead of taking 12 tricks, we only take 11, that would be 50 if we're non-vol and 100 if we're vol. When we're vulnerable, the under tricks are 100, 200, 300, 100 per trick. Now, this is where things get exciting. If you're doubled, if you make maybe a sacrifice or you go too high and you get doubled, when you're non vol going down is 100, 2 is 300, 3 is 500, 4 is 800, 5 is 1100, and so on and so forth. This is very important. 1, 3, 5, 8, 11. If you're going to bid aggressively, you should get to know those numbers because I know them so well after years of just being in, in bad slams when I was just starting to play. So when I was teaching myself, I would just bid like a maniac and I quickly became all too familiar with those numbers. One, three, five, eight, eleven, doubled non-vulnerable under tricks. When you're vulnerable, it changes to two, five, eight, eleven, fourteen. Two hundred, five hundred, eight hundred, eleven hundred, 1400. I know this is a little bit abstract and kind of boring, but we're going to see its applicability in just a few seconds. So let's get started. Now, because we are non vol and we are at favorable vulnerability here, you definitely want to make a preemptive diamond bid. Preempts or weak jumps are used when we want it to be diamonds. It has to be diamonds, and Trump cannot be anything else other than diamonds. You want it, it has to be it, and it can't be anything else. A resounding reason to jump in a suit means you are establishing the Trump suit. This hand is a perfect example. You have to play this in diamonds. You won't have it any other way. Because that's the case, and we have nine diamonds, I think we can jump to five diamonds. It shows a lot of diamonds, it should have a fit, and not enough points to do anything else. I don't think it's necessary to do anything else here. And here's the thing. They bid six clubs vulnerable. And that score is 1370. Don't worry about that for now, just know it's a lot. However, we're non vol because we only see one diamond loser, the ace of diamonds, two spade losers, and two heart losers. We count the ace and queen. That's five total losers, five possible losers. That's the most we can lose. Most we can go down in six diamonds is four, which will cost us one, three, five, eight, 800. I'd rather lose 800 than 1370. And we're pretty sure we can't stop six clubs. 
Seems pretty strange that they would make this bid rather than safely doubling us in five diamonds unless they had a very strong reason. And we don't see very much defensive value in our hand. Just that king of hearts is the only thing that looks like it might give us a trick on defense and we can't count on partner for much of anything in this auction. Therefore, we're going to play six diamonds doubled and we are fine with that because we'd rather lose 800 maybe 500 here because we're gonna avoid losing two hearts thanks to partner's lovely queen minus 500 is going to be a fantastic result here because they can make six clubs it looks like but we'll see it later if that's the case so now we're just losing the ace of diamonds two spades and we lost a heart to the ace of hearts notice we're counting trumps we just saw four trumps go by this is number five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve they have one trump left let's pick it up okay there it is now we're just gonna throw away all our spades to try to tempt them into throwing their own spades which would let us get another trick maybe just throwing away some bad cards and no avail guys now they're gonna play the race on their king however this is really interesting this aggressive approach is more fun and it works look here they're absolutely making six clubs they lose no diamonds no spades in one heart, no clubs. They would get 1370 if we weren't so aggressive. However, because we bid six diamonds, even though we were doubled, we love this score. This is a great, fantastic result because it's better than minus 1370. You can take some assertiveness and some responsibility for your actions, and when you know that you can't go down more than 1370 doubled makes perfect sense to make this bid here's another thing notice how at a lot of tables it might not make it to slam they might be in five clubs however with our aggressiveness they were not able to make five clubs for 600 or 620 with their over trick they won't get those scores. We won't let them. Instead of 600, we only lost 500. This is almost guaranteed to be a top board. Unless for some reason they maybe didn't double our five diamonds, which is pretty absurd because East has three aces and West has the ace of diamonds. I can't see a world in which that would, I mean, it might happen. It always might happen, but it just doesn't make sense to me. This is a really good result for us, and we're super happy to be here. And we didn't even get, we didn't get the chance to play in five diamonds. They made a great six clubs bid. And from there, the best course of action was to again say diamonds. Guys, I would have said seven diamonds if I had to. This is really important. When you have an absurd hand like this, you should bid it to its fullest extent. It's also a lot more fun to do so. Here's another situation. Here, the textbook says to pass, right? It's a bad suit, not much trick-taking power, except for in diamonds. Notice how our partner has passed. This is very important because sometimes when we preempt, we actually take room away from our partner. Here, partner didn't have anything to say so it looks like West is going to have a pretty big hand. Let's make their lives a little harder with our aggressive bidding. I'm going to open three diamonds here. It's not necessarily a nice enough suit, but hey, things happen, right? It's part of the game, and it's definitely a lot more fun. I'm going to pass because I've already told my story. And guys, here's the thing. They're almost definitely going to make four hearts here. Um, rather than playing through this, 
I want us to take a look at something else here. This is really, really interesting. Now, as you may have seen on that first board, sometimes taking absurd risks is actually pretty beneficial. Let's see something really, really wild. What would happen if I opened five diamonds? Now hold up before you close the window, call me a maniac, which I may be. Here's the thing. Bidding five diamonds here is the equivalent of jumping up on the bridge table, standing between your opponents, and screaming and waving your hands and jumping and going nuts because it makes it impossible for them to communicate. They have no room with which to work. Therefore, yes, there's some risk, right? We could get doubled and go down, but I really think they might have a slam here. I'm really worried about that. Therefore, by bidding five diamonds, I am filling up the entire first four levels of the bidding ladder. They can't open at the one level, two level, three level, or even the four level. They, all of those bids are now illegal because they have to bid over my five diamonds bid. Yes, there's some risk to this, but if you're very risk seeking when you're in favorable vulnerability, because we are non bull they are vol, this is a lot more fun to play and actually it might make some good things happen. Let's, let's just see what happens, guys. This is terrible bridge. Obviously, I'm not saying this is the right thing to do. However, I'm showing you an extreme example of this concept, showing you how it can work to make an impact and for it to impact your play the next time you're at the table. I want you to think, you know, sometimes more risk, more reward, right? right? More risk, more reward. More risk, more reward, right? Can't talk. So, West made the double. Um, East bid six clubs. They had no room with which to work. They're allowed to say about two words to each other instead of a hundred because we took up so much space with our five diamond bid. Now, we really like a singleton lead. It can be very effective because a lead is something you want led back to you. So partner gets in, they're gonna send us back a heart because that's what we asked for. Lo and behold, oh man, now they're down and slam, all right? We'll see if they could have made six hearts, but look, we got a plus score. This is fantastic. We love having a plus score here because, you know what's great? Is we don't know what would have happened, but we took some control into our hands. We gave ourselves a chance at making more tricks and sometimes great things can happen because we took a risk, it was safe, you know, we can't go down too much in diamonds, definitely not as much as them making a slam. Um, and then we decided, you know, yes, there are some pretty big downsides to opening five diamonds here, especially if partner had some cards and they didn't have a big game. But actually, this is really interesting. Um, we got a great score here. We got plus 400. This is much better than letting them make four hearts, which is all but set in stone. They lose finesses and spades and diamonds and the ace of clubs, and that's it, right? We are fine with that because we got plus 400. Just by taking up so much room, they're struggling, and y'all might recognize this. Notice when your opponent preempts and you're trying to show a nice hand, maybe even one as nice as this one. Got a lovely 18 points here. It's really hard when the opponents preempt. That's what I want you guys to take away today, okay? Aggressive approach with Ace Bridge because aggressive bidding is more fun. You can play more hands, have more fun. Yes, you might get some big minus 800s, minus 500s, but look guys, it's not the end of the world. It's a really, really exciting thing, and I think you guys are gonna have a blast playing in this style. That's what this is all about, making our game a little bit more fun.
Guys, let's take a look at one more bonus hand um, really quickly. This is something that I really like, and it adds to this aggressive bidding idea. When you're at favorable vulnerability, sometimes we can take some crazy risks. Here's an example of one. Personally, I love playing in one no trump, and therefore I try to make it impossible for the opponents to do so. This was an idea inspired by one of my partners who says, never let them play one no trump if possible. So even though we don't really have a spade overcall here, we're non-vol. Let's try it, you know? Maybe we go down, but hey, who knows what's gonna happen, right? It's better than letting them play their one no trump. A partner should know we don't have much. Otherwise, we probably would have overcalled at the one level. So, let's take a look here. Partner has some nice spades for us. We thought they would because the opponents did not bid spades. The only time that really happens is when they don't have them. So, is there anything we need the trumps and dummy for? Not exactly. At least not right away. We're going to pull all the trumps out. Uh, let's try the heart finesse. We never know what can happen. Um, here we go. This is nice. Uh, perhaps we will trump a heart. Um, give up some diamonds. Had to lose those anyway, right? Um, see what's coming up next. Alrighty. And look at this. Guys, we're only down one. That's amazing. That's only 50. 50 is a great score here, especially at match points, at your pairs games and your tournaments. Look at this. Notice how they have seven tricks in no trump right away. Seven top tricks in the minors. Five diamonds and two clubs, probably even getting a heart as well. However, rather than letting them make 90 for making a no trump or 120 for making two no trump we we did something about it we took action it was aggressive did have some downsides but hey we're non-vulnerable what is there to lose even going down two for minus 100 non-vol it's better than their minus 110 for making two no trump guys Thank you so much. I really hope y'all took something away from this today. If not, just remember the image of standing on the table, jumping and screaming and dancing. That's how effective an opening preempt can be. Or just a wild jump. It can really take away and intercept the communication channels between the opponents. Thank you again. Please check out acebridge.org if you're interested in learning more about lessons with me and my team. And guys, Best of luck in all of your bridge endeavors from acebridge.org. Thank you so much.